We've got the map and the effects of the map for Texas and it is basically exactly what you would have expected. The Republicans were in complete control of the redistricting process. And they've designed a map that will tighten their hold on diversifying parts of the state where the party's grip on power was waning and lock in the GOP's majority in the 38 seat delegation for the US House. By the way, it's not just that they get to change the districts because of population changes. They got two additional House seats and that's the most of any state in this year's reapportionment. And though Texas received those districts because of explosive population growth, 95% of it attributable to people of color. Republicans opted to give white voters effective control of both. Here's the most amazing thing. So this is a state that is increasingly diverse. The white population has been shrinking. They're going to end up, by the way, with probably 25 Republicans, 13 Democrats in a state that went 52.1% for Donald Trump. He got two percentage points more than half. They get almost exactly double the congressional representation. And that's just the raw numbers. We're gonna turn to the racial component of this. And there are some numbers here that are gonna make your blood boil in how racially discriminatory this redistricting process is. But Nina Turner, we know there's bills that would stop this sort of thing from happening, the For the People Act and all that. And I guess we're just we're just not gonna do it. Democrats have control and they're just not gonna use it. And so they have given their implicit stamp of approval on Texas doing what it's gonna do. Yeah, no, they definitely have. And what really galls me is we saw this coming. There has been a backlash against voting rights and voter security and expansion of the franchise. Uh, even before Pres- Senator Obama became President Obama, but especially after he became President Obama, go and check the receipts and the records. This backlash has been swift and deep. And the fact that we all knew, especially those of us who have served or are serving in elected office, that 2010, you know, that was a census year, redraw the lines in 2011. The Republicans had control of most legislatures in the United States of America, as they still do today. But what I cannot understand as is if the Democratic apparatus knew that 2020 was going to come and then 2022, 2021, excuse me, 2020 since this year, 10 years later, and 2021, for the love of God, why did we not invest the requisite money? into building up a bench of people who could run and win, but especially run to try to change the dynamics of state legislatures all across the daggone country. So that at least we could blunt some of this stuff. I was in the Ohio Senate in 2010 and I voted against the Ohio maps. You know why? Because of gerrymandering. Because it did not serve the people, it served politicians. And we find ourselves right back in this place in 2020, now 2021, with Republicans being able to draw the lines. I don't know, I kind of saw this coming, John. Yeah, you did, and I love having you here because like, as you said, you've actually been through this. Um, And we we knew it and uh, it's happening. So so like, think think about Texas in particular. In this time, and we'll get to the racial component in a moment. Um, so we have a national movement of red hat wearers that are sure that political power is being stolen and that you can't trust elections. And you have Texas, which passed a bill to try to make it as hard for uh, generally non-white Republican voters, carefully selected to be able to vote. And they're stealing congressional seats from them by just like carving out bits of Austin and bits of Houston and throwing it into a rural area. And they know what they're doing, they know exactly what they're doing. And none of that is still in the election, making it harder for one side to vote effectively, taking the representation through computer model gerrymandering. All of that is perfectly acceptable. There aren't gonna be any cyber ninjas, there aren't gonna be any audits, but that is how you steal a majority. You might not steal the presidency that way, but you might well steal control of the house. And so then you also have the racial component. So. The Latino population in Texas has grown by 1.98 million, the white population by just 187,000. So you can see where the growth is going. Now I want you to take a look at not just that they didn't give the representation to the people who are actually increasing the diversity of the state. They actually dialed it back. 
the number of districts with black residents as the majority of eligible voters dropped from one to zero. Texas used to have one, it doesn't have one anymore, despite the growth in the population. In the final map, Republicans reduced the number of districts in which Hispanics make up the majority of eligible voters from eight to seven. Meaning the state would have 23 districts with a white majority among eligible voters up from 22 currently. By the way, so seven for Hispanic, zero for black, 23 for white. The population in Texas, according to the most recent census, white and Hispanic is almost identical. 23 to seven, that's what you do. You like it does, like people talk about like Texas getting blue. Like, first of all, that, that's a, a you're assuming a lot about what people are going to support or whatever. But if you're just talking about like the size of a population, think about how much they can manipulate this. They can take a state that they win basically half the vote in and take double the representation, and then they can allocate that representation twice as big to one population as another, despite the fact that their population is exactly the same. And all of this is legal, except that we have the opportunity at the national level to do something about it. But that would require actually changing the filibuster and a couple of senators don't wanna do that, so we don't do it. So if you live in Texas, you're you're already being suppressed in seven different ways. If you're Hispanic or black living in Texas, you're gonna be suppressed even more than you were previously, which was already unacceptable. And this is what we get, Nina. Supreme Court's not gonna do anything, Voting Rights Act is done. There's not gonna be any new legislation. So this is the new reality in Texas likely. Texas and, and, and trust, trust and believe that uh, other Republicans will try to follow this model. I just I just know Tucker's gonna talk about this social engineering that's going on, this, this, this how unfair what is happening in Texas <laughs> is. I just know it, John, he's gonna watch us yeah. today. He's gonna talk about that tonight. The absolute reality here is that this is a stain on democracy. And that we collectively must do something about it, starting with those folks in the Congress. And doing away with the filibuster would is a awesome start, which they are, you know, don't have the stomach to do it. And I'm not so sure that even the president does because he hedges on it too much for me. Also, yeah. we need to make the requisite investments. So that people can run, you know what? Another two year, ten years is coming. I guess if, if the if Mother Earth doesn't implode because we don't want to do a damn thing about climate change. But I digress. Let's assume another ten years will come, and I believe that they will. Where are we going to be ten years from now? Yeah, it is time to start planning right now. I mean, the vote is. I mean, they are just pre, even before anybody cast a ballot, they are already pre, uh, not just pre planning. The outcome of those elections are already predetermined because yeah. of the way that these people are drawing the lines. And that's what we need people to understand. You know, I got a quote here I've been dying by Amelia Boykins Robinson, and she said, A voteless people is a homeless people. Basically, yeah. the vote, it, the majority of the people are not gonna ever run for office. But where we do are supposed to be the most equal is when we cast our vote. How can that be when you have people just using, as you said, now it's not even the power to pee and the power of the computer? Because gerrymandering has always happened, but it is much more sinister, much more exact with computer generated gerrymandering. 100%. How in the world are people ever going to be able to have some control or let their voices be heard when you have politicians manipulating the process before they ever cast the ballot? Something is wrong, John. It's been wrong for a very long time, but it is getting worse. Yep, and, and we're supposed to have some politicians that actually care to do something about it, and we unfortunately really don't. Like, they're just not, like, Cinema doesn't care about this. Like, Manchin doesn't care about this. They don't care at all, and they're the Democrats, supposedly. Um, and there's no consequence either for them not caring. Let's put that out there. They become exactly. a household name. They get called into the White House for a conversation. People fawning all over them. What will they do? What will they decide? Yeah. You know where yeah. we fit into the moderates, into the corporatist wing of the Democratic Party? Yeah. I, I just don't get it. Yeah. And by the way, like uh, if I knew that we were definitely going to lose a majority, I would do something with that time. And by the way, they're not doing anything, so they were going to lose it anyway. But after after this and after other states get through with this, forget about it. Like, and, that, and that's how it works. The Republicans do not need to get more popular. They don't need more voters to support them. 
They don't need to come up with any sort of platform. In 2020, they literally didn't have a platform. There was nothing. They weren't advocating for anything. And they won't be in 2022, they won't be in 2024. Sure, they'll demonize immigrants, they'll talk about how you should have more guns or whatever, like a cannon on your front lawn. But they literally do not need to become more popular because they have computer models that just deliver them a majority anyway. And by the way, exactly. there was one little note. I was um, I was going on Twitter and seeing people's reaction to this. And there were a bunch of Republicans sort of debating, was this good enough? Because a lot of Republicans online feel like this wasn't an aggressive enough map. Because it balanced stealing districts with protecting incumbents rather than just stealing as many districts as possible. But um, some liked it and there was a fun little tidbit. So one rando said, uh, D's are being far more aggressive with their gerrymandering in blue states than, than ours are. Ours seem to be acting very lackadaisical. While D's are brutally drawing out every last R that they can in blue states. By the way, are the Democrats gonna be do, doing some gerrymandering? Yes, and I would also ban that, ban, ban all of it, ban it for the Democrats, ban it for the Republicans. Um, but I love the idea that like they literally just took like the entire Hispanic population of Texas and said, screw you, you get nothing. And that's lackadaisical. But anyway, I love the response to that person even more. Andrew said, every vulnerable incumbent in Texas is now in a safe seat, safe seat, maybe likely for Nels. And we can pick off an RGV seat while giving Cuellar a fighting chance in a primary two. That's a good map. Look at that. So they're All talking the about, they, they just, they, like that, Cuellar's the Democrat. But they're like, we came up with a map that I think he can beat off a progressive challenger. These are Republicans. And they like are so glad that Quayer might be benefited by that map. Like, I know it's just a rando or whatever, but I found that to be amazing, Nina. Well, of course they are, because these corporatist Dems will do anything, fight their own mama to stop mm -hmm. a progressive. I mean, that's what this comes down to. So I am not a surprise about that. Republicans yeah. play the long game too. I mean, it's one thing to concentrate on the Congress and the presidency. No doubt, those offices are vitally important, especially if we're gonna get some folks in there that's really, really, really yeah. gonna serve the people, asterisk. However, we cannot continue to turn our back on state legislatures and think that we are going to advance the causes for humanity or the democratic values that we say we ascribe to if we don't make investments in state legislatures, government closest to the people, the place that we are losing the most ground. And not mm -hmm. to say we lose a lot of ground on the federal level, don't get me wrong. But the most ground is being lost that has generational impact the most often is on the state level of government. And so Democrats need to get a clue, they need to get it real quick that we have got to plan for the long term in the same way that the Republicans do. They say, hey, would the Republicans rather have control of the Cong Congress? Absolutely. Would they rather have control of the presidency? Absolutely. But you know what they say to Democrats? Go ahead, y'all can have this for a little while because we gonna have most of the 50 states. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.